today we are going to talk about the rise and risk in what we call zero DTE options that zero days to expiration. Essentially, that is a acronym for very, very short dated options volume. Now, this very short dated options volume has spiked in recent weeks, and we want to talk about what the phenomenon is and what the possible risks associated with that are. So let's start with the general state of the union in the options market. According to the OCC, that is the Options Clearing Corp, August was the third highest volume month in options history. Uh, and so we have this explosion in overall options volume. And as you can see here, really, it's just after the pandemic uh, that the options volume really accelerated in general. After the pandemic, we marched into meme mania and a whole bunch of these other phenomena that really focused attention on the options market. And we saw an explosion again in those options trading volumes. Now, what we mentioned is that this presentation is about the risk and rise of short dated options volume. And as you can see here on the left, this is from a Wall Street Journal article and Spot Gamma actually, uh, we provided the data for this, which shows that the share of total options volume for contracts expiring in less than a week is now at an all time high. It's roughly around 50% of total options volume expires in five days or less. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the options market, you know that in the SPX index options, that's one of the most popular options for trading, there's an expiration every single day. In the spiders and the queues, which are two of the larger ETFs that trade, there's exp expirations on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then most large stocks like Tesla and Apple have expirations every uh, Friday. So what this is basically telling us is that the trading is concentrating in the shortest dated available options uh, across the board. And then if you just look at SPX, this chart is from Goldman Sachs that is on the right of your screen. You can see that it's, a, again, a similar phenomenon where you have this very short dated uh, options volume uh, sustained over 40%. We've seen spikes above 60% in the last few weeks. Again, we're going to get into what the, uh, what the uh, ramifications of this. And then Cherry on top of all this, not just the shortest dated options volume. We showed at the start how options volume is at a record. We have record option volume at a time when overall equity and futures liquidity is at low. So on your screen here is the top of book liquidity for ES futures, which is the global benchmark for equity futures that is futures tied to the S&P 500. And what you can see here is this is the liquidity, top of book liquidity for late last year. You could see going to the third quarter of last year was really quite large compared to where we are now. So the amount of that is available on the bidder offer has shrunk dramatically. And again, this is not just a phenomenon in the futures. This is also in equities and treasuries and a whole bunch of other assets. And the problem is, is that when you have growing options volume and options positions, the notional exposure of those options positions from a hedging perspective is still the same, even though the liquidity is lower. So what happens is if you need to dynamically hedge these positions, you are having likely more net impact in the market because you have to pay more spread to get your order done. If you had to fill 100 contracts back in September, you could probably have gotten that done arguably on the bidder offer, for example. But now with only less than 50 contracts available at top of book, you may have to pay one or two levels through top of book in order to get your order filled. And that can cause more volatility, obviously, in the market. And so the the impact, arguably, of this increase in options volume, both overall and in the shortest dated contracts, is exacerbated by the fact that liquidity is so poor, and that compounds really this risk. This is part of the reason that uh, we say, look, the idea of a flash crash is increased in this situation because it is compounded by the fact that this liquidity is so bizarre. Put out a message on Twitter. This was at the end of October. And it basically said, look, everybody, this rise in short dated options volume, which as we just mentioned, is sometimes hitting over 60% now for the SPX. Uh, this is the stuff that flash crashes are made of. Now, some people accused of uh, fear mongering and we pushed back and we said, look, this is a market structure issue, not a an investment issue, right? We're not concerned about what people are investing in for the long term. Like we're simply pointing out here is that when you have this rise of very short dated options volume, that is a rise in leverage and excessive leverage in markets generally leads to things breaking. Now, the next day, actually, Goldman came out and said something similar, as you can see on the right, the quote said that, imagine if something big happens and people are on the wrong side of the extreme options trades. So again, it's nice to have a large bank kind of having the same view of the implications of some of this increase in short dated options volume. You may sit here and say, well, big deal, You know, we're having this increase in volume, but one of the problems with this increase in volume is that it's not translating to open interest. So on your screen here is a chart, again, from Goldman Sachs. And what this is showing is that 
the call volume, and this is actually true of puts as well, but in this case, the call volume is increasing as a percent of OI. So what that is telling us is that the volume is increasing, but we are not getting a shift in open interest. So this is not people who are positioning for an extended rally. As many of you know, here in November of 2022, the S&P is down roughly 15% for the year. And so if you were bullish on the market longer term, you would buy calls at longer dated options uh, expirations, like you know, a month or three months or six months out. Uh, so that when the market rallies, you're participating right in that rally. But we're not getting that. What we're getting is very short dated volume that doesn't translate to open interest, which means that this is essentially day trading volume. Now, day trading doesn't mean it has to be someone sitting in their mom's basement just speculating back and forth, right? It could be larger, you know, institutional type entities that are are trading this volume. But essentially what this is telling us is that uh, whatever the positions are, they come in in the morning and they're generally closed by the, the afternoon, right? It's very short term trading. Uh, which is generally associated with speculation. And, and we're going to touch on exactly who this could be and who we think generates this flow. But the key point here is that, again, uh, this is day trading volume, right? It, it comes in in the morning and it is gone by the afternoon and it is not uh, people establishing longer term positions. So first question in everyone's mind is, is this retail? When, when I say day trading, it, immediately everyone's mind goes to you know Wall Street bets and that type of thing. But according to JP Morgan, here's tracking this flow. Uh, what they show is that it is only about 12% of retail flow in their estimation. And that's this chart here on the left. And so, you know, this phenomenon uh, is actually, yeah, yes, it's elevated relative to uh, historical standards, but actually seems to be a little bit off. And so while the retail same day options flow is increasing, it appears to only be 10 to 15% of actual overall short dated options volume. And so this suggests, again, that there's an institutional angle in short dated options trading. Okay, so what are some of the reasons one would want to trade these short dated zero DTE options? Um, the first one is that there's there's a lot of people who have had the strategy of wanting to sell very short dated options. That's condors or straddles or call spreads, put spreads, etc. And the idea here being that the very short dated options expirations do hold an applied volatility premium. And the general view here is that the short dated options positions, so if you sell today's expiration, you get more relative decay than if you sold an option that was 30 days out and you accrued one day of time decay, right? And so that draws out a lot of these traders who are trying to take advantage uh, of this perceived implied volatility premium. And again, that is a and, and that is a type of trade that's been around for a while and in our view likely doesn't explain why suddenly in the last several weeks there's been this huge surge in the zero DTE volume, but it is one big reason that traders like to trade this very short date. The second one is dynamic hedging. Again, in the Wall Street Journal article, it was pointed out that these short dated options can offer market makers and other dynamic hedgers uh, the ability to be very granular in their hedging abilities, right? So if they need to get a little gamma or whatever it may be, even just for the day, they could come in and, and dynamically use these short dated options uh, for hedging purposes. And linked to that is the idea that you could use the short dated options as stock or futures delta replacement. So rather than buying a bunch of futures, if you need to buy as a hedge uh, or even possibly as a speculation, you could buy a bunch of same day calls. Now that is fairly risky, but if you know, for example, that you have exposure that's going to roll off by the end of the day, then maybe it makes sense to just use some of these short dated options uh, as a levered hedge, as opposed to buying a bunch of futures. Uh, could also save on margin, you know, just speculating on a few other reasons here. Uh, for doing that. And then again, this immediately links into this low cost leverage speculation idea uh, that if I really want to get the most bang for the buck, right, I'm betting that the market's going to go up today. I have a whole bunch of confidence in there. The payout, uh, if you select the right call option, can be very large, right, relative to uh, some equivalent stock or futures exposure, right? So the idea that I can get long or get short the market using these short dated options as a directional play is, of course, very popular. Uh, this is a surge that we saw in, during meme mania, right? So when you're looking at the speculation at GameStop and AMC back in January of 2021, there was a lot of very short dated options volume because people wanted to pile into those to get leverage bet that the stock was going to go up 5, 10, 20 percent. Uh, and then, of course, a lot of those positions would be closed uh, by the end of the trading day. And so we're seeing, you know, possibly that type of activity just in the S&P 500, which is a, obviously a much larger index and notionally um, a lot more expensive to trade the SPX versus uh, GameStop or AMC calls. And then the last one uh, is kind of the most aggressive reason to want to use uh, these short dated options and what we call it weaponized gamma. So weaponized gamma is a term that we coined 
back in August of 2020. And it was around this idea that SoftBank had been purchasing call options and big tech positions uh, to force the market higher. And that led to this uh, idea of weaponized gamma, where you say, look, if I buy a whole bunch of short dated call options or call options that expire today, in theory, a market maker or dealer is going to sell me those calls. So they're going to be short calls. And if the market starts to go up, they need to start buying stock. And the weaponized gamma aspect is that I know that if I time my trade right and it's big enough, that I can force other entities to have to hedge. And that's the weaponized part of this, right? I can force a counterparty to trade something in a specific direction if I place the right trade. Again, this is kind of the most speculative angle here, but it is one uh, that we think merits some thought and attention. So we hope with that, we shed a little bit of light on the rise and risk of this short dated options volume. If you have any questions, please send them to info at spotgame.com or hit us up at spotgame on Twitter. As always, you can get a free seven day trial of all of our products at spotgame.com. And please add your questions or thoughts in the comment section below.